They are panicking. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, this country is about to do the unthinkable. And I want you to understand the shocking reason why they're facing this decision. Now, if you're wondering what we're doing in Shenzhen today, it's because we're on the run from Chinese authorities from talking about deflation, but that's not all. Things there in China are unraveling so quickly, their economy is about to hit a wall. And I know most people say that this can't happen in America. Our economy is too strong and too robust. But by the end of the show, I'm going to make the case while well, we're going to face a similar circumstance. Now, I appreciate all of you who have been concerned and express your well wishes over what's going on with the cameras or lighting or my face. Well, we've got a major update. It wasn't what I thought or what any of us thought. I'm going to put a post on my public Facebook profile so you can check it out there and comment. And now let's over to Bloomberg. Well, we picked today's story up with a headline. China is hiding more and more data from the rest of the world. You may remember yesterday, it was just about their youth unemployment, which is a significant issue because when your country is having problems and you have the ability to make data go away, well, it starts to give everybody the distinct impression because the government data is again lagged that whatever is going on there is far worse than the government wants you to know. And once people start to think things are bad, well, they react accordingly. And check out what else they're covering up all of a sudden. Numbers are showing the amount of land developers bought and the price they paid have been missing from the monthly release. The dating series goes back to 1998, and this move came as the amount of land sold for development slumped by more than 50% last year. Now, this is staggering because you think about China, and of course, we know they have this Ponzi scheme real estate market, and the issue here is if there's less demand and less land being sold, well, that's an issue. The other factor is, what if these developers overpaid for the land compared to current prices? It just starts to unravel what we see here as a major problem in the real estate market that must be far more serious than we think because there's no reason the government would need to cover this up if it wasn't. It's not just that, but suddenly China is no longer sharing their currency reserves, is that is the amount of money the government holds in official foreign exchange assets. This would mean things like dollars, yens, euros, and whatnot, which has held remarkably steady since 2017. That's despite China running an increasingly large trade surplus over that period, which should have led to an increase in reserves. And that's absolutely correct in terms of how the system works. If you're the world's largest exporter, well, you're pulling in currencies from all over your world from your trading partners. But if you're having to start to spend that currency down, well, it tells us what we know. There is a not only a global dollar shortage, but there may be a shortage of other currencies. And this would be a huge problem because if China is spending this down, not only does it tell us their economy is contracting, it validates what we're seeing in the financial system of companies starting to run out of money and not be able to pay their bills. Well, we've got more to update on that here in a bit. And how about this? China home prices are now dropping at faster pace as downturn worsens. Now you start to think about why does this matter? Because if you're in the market to buy a house and prices are falling, well, what are you likely to do is perhaps step back a little bit and say, well, maybe I should wait a couple months. And if they fall over the next couple months, you think, well, maybe I should wait a little bit longer. And next thing you know, that decision to step back and hold off a purchase puts further downward pressure on prices as to demand evaporates. Of course, we know the other problem in China is their economy is just not in a good place right now. And new home prices in 70 cities, excluding state subsidized housing, fell 0.23% last month from June when they slipped 0.06%. Now, I know you're saying that's not big numbers as prices slid 0.47% in the secondary market, according to the data. And it's not necessarily the size of the number that matters here. It's the direction of where it's going, because you think about these property developers, they're hemorrhaging cash. And we've got some more updates on them today, too because this all fits that broad narrative of why is China about to do the unthinkable, something they don't want to do. It's because their economy is rapidly contracting. You think about the post-pandemic, what happened here around the rest of the world, everything boomed, and now it's going into a bust. And this is a huge problem because what do these developers need? They need rising prices and rising demand. And what does falling prices start to tell us? That demand is going away. 
These declined to offer no relief to developers like Country Garden, which faces a potential default after missing bond payments this month as the housing market sputters. Risks are also spreading to the financial sector, as we talked about yesterday, where a trust company with a massive exposure to real estate missed payments on some of its investment products. So you start to you know see this narrative come together here is you know China's not talking about its foreign currency reserves. Country Garden has a dollar shortage. They have a money shortage problem because they can't pay their bonds. Because they can't pay their bonds, those who bought them, like these investment trusts, can't pay their shareholders and their clients. And you start to see that it build this feedback loop and it's getting the system's getting stressed now. And all it will take is one more move to watch literally the, all the dominoes fall and the system come crashing down, which will force Beijing's hand. Chinese developers need a turnaround in sales and prices to alleviate a multi-year credit crisis that's showing no sign of easing. And there's a key part, no sign of easing. A potential default by Country Garden, formerly the country's biggest developer by sales, threatens even bigger fallout than defaulted peer China Evergrande Group. You know, it's kind of like our banking system here. We could have a few regional banks fail, and at the time it was pretty traumatic, and now people look back and say, well, isn't that capitalism, Steve? Isn't Hey, they made bad decisions. Why should we support them? It's not the fact that we had a few banks fail. It's not the fact that Evergrande defaulted. It's the fact is what happened when it comes again, instead of three banks, it's 30 banks or 40 banks. What happens when it's Country Garden failing and then a whole bunch of other developers failing? That's the issue here, and you're starting to get the picture there that this contraction in credit is causing a massive currency shortage, not just in the U.S., but may in China, and it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. And China asked some funds to avoid net equity sales as market sinks. Now you're hearing that President Joe Biden has now got the laws passed where we're going to be, you know, curtailing some of the investment in China, or at least we're very close to that. I, and what we're seeing here in China now is the stock market's been going down, and which makes sense. And so you look at this as a potential double whammy as U.S. firms may have to pull back their investment in China, and that would mean selling stocks, driving the equity market down, and why this matters so much is we've looked at these charts before is sentiment. What people think about the economy, what think people think about their financial well-being is unfortunately highly correlated to the value of their net worth, what their stocks are worth, what their homes are worth, how much money they have in their bank account. And so China's worried is saying, look, our economy is slowing down here. And if our stock market goes down even more, well, that's going to put a big dent in sentiment and cause spending to even get even worse. As Chinese authorities have asked some investment funds this week to avoid being net sellers of equities as a route in the nation's financial markets deepen, Stock Exchange issued the so-called window guidance to several large mutual fund houses, telling them to refrain for a day, just one day, from selling more onshore shares than they purchase, according to people on the inside. The instructions were relayed to fund managers through investment executives at the firm. And as you know, in China, you better follow those rules or you might be on the run with me. And so here we see this big issue is why are they concerned about the stock market? Well, it comes back to what is China doing? What did we talk about yesterday? Well, they're cutting their, their funds rate. They're, they're re, they're, that, they're, what their equivalent is to the federal funds rate. And this is an issue because when you see central bankers cut rates, it's never ever for a good reason. As Chinese authorities are resorting to a familiar tactic to stem a downdraft in local assets as the economic slowdown deepens and a crisis brews in the shadow banking industry, an interest rate cut on Tuesday has done little to shore up sentiment, and I'm going to show you why, and speculation is growing that the government will roll up more steps to provide support until they have to do the ultimate, the absolute unthinkable, and this is something that China doesn't want to do, but their hand's going to be forced. Now, let's take a look at why cutting things like the federal funds rate doesn't exactly inspire confidence in the equity market. 
And here you can see the federal funds rate. We don't have China's charts, but we do have the U.S. charts, and it's very similar in concept against the Wilshire 5000 price index. This is the total U.S. stock market shown in red. And lo and behold, when the Fed is cutting rates, you know, you notice what happens. The stock market goes down. The Fed cuts rate. The market goes down. Now, you'll notice going into the pandemic, the Fed was indeed cutting rates. The market initially started to react, but due to all the pandemic stimulus, people bought stocks and it went way up. And now people are saying, look, it's the Fed cuts rates, it's bullish. No, it's extremely bearish because at this point, if you listen to what the Fed is saying, they're telling you, look, we think the economy is too strong. It's too hot. We want to cool it off. And if they start an aggressive or even a series of rate cuts, it tells you something's wrong. This is validating what we know about China is that whatever's going on underneath is far worse than the government wants us to know. And history validates this as such guidance tends to do little to support the market. After the authorities were said to have made a similar request in September, the CSI 300 gauge plunged about 10% in the following few weeks to reach the lowest level in three years, suggesting more downside risk for China stocks is on the way. And China's shadow bank misses dozens of payments as risks grow. And so now we're seeing, you know, the risk start to spread. And this is becoming a problem in the economy. And one thing that shouldn't be seeing a lot of risk is your trading account because it should be growing if you have CTA Timer Pro. Now, I got an email today from a subscriber who says, Steve, I absolutely love your report. In fact, I've got a hack for it. You got to tell everyone because he did the QQQ trade, which we showed here. Our system said, look, you could start taking positions here when everyone was bearish and then here on this pullback when people still weren't certain it said look if you haven't already take positions on this move higher or if you did add to those positions he said his hack he said steve when it rallies up a bunch and your your system starts to take a reversal i go from long to short he says i look forward every day to getting your report and you can too there's a link in the description it's only 30 bucks a month and you'll see one good trade we'll pay for it all for a year we go back to january 9th we can see the short covering on our machine position, which is what our report looks at and adds an impressive historical overlay said to buy. Then again, on March 15th, it said, do it again if you didn't already. And then here we showed you on July 27th, the machine started pulling back what looked like a toppy type of pattern going on, giving you some cautionary warning. Here we have from yesterday's report, August 14th, the machines are backing down. They're starting to move short. And guess what? Our report picked it up the entire way through. And so there's your hack from one of our subscribers. Now let's take a look because yesterday we talked about these investment trusts in China. One specifically was having problems. Well, guess what? Where there's one cockroach, well, there's usually two or more. As Zhang Grung International Trust missed payments on dozens of products and has no immediate plan to make clients whole because, well, they don't have the money, indicating troubles at the embattled Chinese shadow bank are deeper than previously known. And Wang Qing, the board secretary of the firm partially owned by financial giant Songzi Enterprise, told investors in a meeting early this week that the firm missed payments on a batch of products on August 8th, adding to the delays on at least 10 others since late July. And what we can see is at least 30 products are now overdue, and Zhang Grong also halted redemptions and some short-term instruments. And so here again, you, you know, this comes back to where we start in today's show. China's not talking about their foreign currency reserves. You know, the, the real estate developers are short money, and in turn, the investment trusts don't get money. And what are we starting to see? They can't pay their clients. Does it start to sound like the U.S. regional banking system earlier this year? Well, it gets worse. The company doesn't have an immediate plan to cover the payments since its short-term liquidity has dried up. So here, they're very specifically saying, we don't have money. And this is going to put Beijing in a position, as you'll see, to do the unthinkable. He added that the number of products with missed payments has risen and the company is facing a tsunami of questions from investors, which should be obvious if the real estate companies aren't paying well and their trust owns those real estate bonds, of course they're not getting paid, and they're their own wealth managers, according to people on the inside. Wang asked for patience as the firm seeks to recoup the value of its investments or you mean praise that somehow something is going to turn this around when what we're seeing is everything here is telling us what's going on in China is getting worse. Liquidity has dried up unexpectedly 
unexpectedly, making it hard to meet short-term debt obligations as most of the underlying assets are long-term and illiquid. Now, I wanna focus on this term unexpectedly because what it's telling us is all of a sudden, we started to see this gradual slowdown in China's economy, then it accelerated a little bit, and everyone said, oh, don't worry, you know, they're gonna you know, do some stimulus, they're gonna pull out of it, it's not a big deal, and now what we're seeing is they're hitting a wall, and this is a problem because here in the US, nobody thinks our economy can have this happen to them. Nobody right now. And I'm gonna make the case of why we might be in the same situation. We're just a few months behind. The products bear some resemblance to a funding pool, he said, referring to a previously widespread practice where proceeds from new products are used to pay other investors, or which sounds like a Ponzi scheme to me. This message was, method was banned by regulators a few years ago because again, if it looks like a Ponzi scheme, it probably is. The big danger is that a negative feedback loop kicks in with property stress causing strains in the financial system, undermining credit expansion, exactly what we've been talking about on the show for so long, and depressing growth, which in turn exasperates the slump in the property sector. It becomes a self-feeding feedback loop, one just dominoes down the chain and then it restarts over and over as the banks are then forced to deal with these defaulted loans. And of course you have all, all these investment trusts, people not getting paid. Next thing you know, property values start to plummet and really these real estate companies start to outright fail and you have an entire financial crisis on your hands that will spread to the rest of the world before people know it. And that's what will put China up to doing potentially the unthinkable. As a PBOC advisor says, China urgently needs to boost consumption. Now you start to think about this when you have a very large youth unemployment problem and you have a lack of demand, well, what do you need to do? Boost consumption. And this is one of the biggest problems with the design of a debt-based economy. It's all based on further consumption, more consumption, more consumption after that. It's just borrowing and consuming, borrowing, consuming, anything but that, or a slowdown, even worse, a contraction in that, causes the entire system to blow up, which puts governments in very uncomfortable positions. The most urgent goal now is to stimulate household consumption. And it's necessary to use all reasonable, legally compliant, and economic channels to put money in residents' profits, pockets, said Kai Fang, a member of the Monetary Policy Committee at the People's Bank in China. Now, if you want to know how unusual it is to hear something like this from a central banker, well, this guy, I think, is speaking the truth. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is what they should do or that I agree with it. I just get the premise of what he's saying. Kai added in the article posted late Monday on social media account of the China Finance 40 Forum, one of the nation's top economic think tanks, that continued unemployment, there you go, which is coming to America in the wake of the pandemic is crimping household spending and the consumer confidence is expected to weaken without new policies. And that's exactly right. He's got it nailed perfectly because when people aren't working, they don't have as much money to spend. And next thing you know, your economy has to shrink down to what's actually able to generate actually growth. And that's a lot less than when everyone's at full employment. Authorities have so far indicated they're not seriously considering handing out cash straight to consumers because we know China doesn't like to do that. Former Premier Li Kuang said last year that tax and fee cuts for companies were the most direct, fair, and efficient way to stimulate the economy as opposed to consumer vouchers and large-scale investment, underscoring a preference to help employers instead of giving cash directly to individuals. And yet the question then becomes is, can we see this happen in America? Could we go from this boom cycle of, of handing out money to now where we say we can't do that anymore, we have to tighten interest rates, we, we're gonna have to you know, cause lending conditions to tighten up. Could we get back to a point here where things are so bad that the government might actually consider handing out money again? Well, the answer is yes. And if we look at our property market and compare it to China's, well, we're facing a similar problem just in a different space. Here we can see downtown San Francisco office tower sells at a whopping 66% off as the commercial real estate Christ claims yet another victim. We found out that this building sold for roughly 70% less, according to Zero Hedge, an ominous sign of what would come as the commercial real estate market domino appears to be falling. And this is really important because when this gets to the banks, 
when the banks have to deal with the fact that they have loans coming due and the values of these buildings coming down, you can just say goodbye to the rest of our regional banking system. And what does that mean for the housing market? Well, the residential space will be next. As U.S. housing starts advanced in July in single family construction, new construction rose 3.9% to 1.45 million. When this sounds great, as permits even increased to the highest in more than a year, as home builders are working around the clock to break ground, as limited availability in the resale market continues to tilt prospective buyers toward new construction. That said, the outlook for the overall housing market remains shaky amid growing uncertainty in the economy. But think about this in the U.S. You know, here we compare this to China. China in the U.S., what do developers do? They buy land, they start to develop it, they build homes on it, and then they go to sell them. But what if demand suddenly goes away for those homes? Who's on the hook for them? Well, not just the developers, it's also the banks that lent them money. Could that all fall apart? Well, absolutely. And here you can see on this chart the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for commercial industrial loans to firms of all sizes. Now we're using this because we have more data than we do on the residential side of the market, but we do note in past the charts are very similar. And we've got that compared to new privately owned housing units started in red. And here you can see when banks tighten lending standards, usually housing starts come down as you can see that in red. Banks tighten lending standards, that means developers have less money, not only developers, but consumers as well who want to buy homes and that means housing starts come crumbling down and look at now as everybody's talking about the rebound in the housing market well if banks continue to tighten lending standards we're going to be talking about hitting that wall that's happening just like it is in china and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now